India's Defense Acquisition Council recently approved the purchase of 87 medium altitude long endurance UAVs, worth about rupees 30,000 crore to boost surveillance, reconnaissance, and precision strike capabilities. The program will split orders 6436 between the lowest and second lowest bidders, with major Indian defense firms expected to compete. The Ministry of Defense plans to issue an expression of interest, mandating high indigenous content, covering aerostructures, engine integration, electro-optical infrared sensors, satellite communications and navigation systems. This initiative aligns with Make in India goals and addresses security challenges from China and Pakistan, whose advanced drones pose regional threats. The UAVs will serve all three armed forces, with the Army likely getting the largest share for operations along the LAC and LOC. Lieutenant General Sultan Kamalet Danov of Kazakhstan visited India in August 2025 to explore collaboration on upgrading Kazakhstan's Su-30 SM fleet using India's Super-30 modernization program. The visit included meetings with India's top military leadership and defense officials, where technologies like the indigenous Virupaksh ASA radar, advanced avionics and new weapon systems were showcased. Kazakhstan operating 30 Su-30SM jets, seeks to enhance combat capabilities while addressing maintenance issues worsened by Western sanctions on Russia. India's experience with the world's largest Su-30 MKI fleet and indigenous upgrade capabilities positions it as a viable partner. The talks held in a cordial atmosphere also covered broader defense cooperation, joint training, and space collaboration under the Shanghai Cooperation Organization framework. The Indian Navy has completed the rescue seat certification of the South African Navy's submarine, SAS Mantha TC, marking the first such certification for any friendly foreign navy. This milestone follows the 2024 Submarine Rescue and Cooperation Implementation Agreement between the two nations, aimed at improving submarine crew safety and interoperability in underwater rescue missions. The certification confirmed the vessel's compatibility with India's submarine rescue system, enabling swift and effective responses in emergencies. This cooperation strengthens operational readiness, deepens strategic maritime ties, and extends India's proven deep-sea rescue expertise to partner nations. It also underscores India's growing role as a reliable security provider in the Indian Ocean region, while enhancing mutual trust and capability in collective maritime security. China has announced a $47 billion, 5,000 km railway project, linking Xinjiang to Tibet, set to be completed in three phases by 2035. The first phase, from Incheng to Shigats, 1,300 km, is expected to start in late 2025. The second will connect Lhasa to Nyingki, near the India-China border, by 2030, with final links completed in the third phase. Defense experts warn, the line will allow the PLA to swiftly deploy troops, tanks, and artillery near the LAC year-round, even in winter. This move, viewed as contrary to China's peaceful dialogue commitments, could increase military pressure on India, prompting New Delhi to accelerate its own border infrastructure projects, including roads, bridges, and tunnels. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited announced that it is developing an indigenous active electronically scanned array radar for the upcoming marine utility helicopter in collaboration with DRDO's electronics and radar development establishment. The UH Marine, based on the ALH Dhruv platform, is being designed with the Indian Navy to meet maritime operational needs, including corrosion resistance, foldable rotors, and advanced avionics. The ASA radar will enable detection of small vessels, low-flying aircraft, and submarine periscopes, while aiding search and rescue, navigation, and weather mapping. If successful, 
the Navy may procure around 50 units for deployment on frontline warships. The platform will also feature indigenous sonar, electro-optic and infrared sensors, tactical data links and self-protection systems, supporting India's defense self-reliance vision. Following the S-400 Triumph, Air Defense System's historic 300 km kill of a Pakistani AWAC aircraft during Operation Sindor, the Indian Air Force has moved to procure two additional long-range air defense squadrons. The S-400, deployed under Sudarshan Chakra configuration, also intercepted multiple drones, rockets and fighter incursions, proving vital in securing air dominance. India's current order for five S-400 squadrons, out of which three delivered, two due by 2026, protects key western and northern sectors. The new acquisition, planned for 2027 to 29, may include the advanced S-500, if available sooner, offering hypersonic and stealth interception capability. Both systems will integrate with India's IECCS and Akash tier networks, alongside indigenous systems like Akash, MRSAM, QRSAM, and the upcoming Kusha, ensuring a robust layered defense against threats from Pakistan and China. As per some reports from news media sources, an infiltration attempt along the line of control in the Kurunda area of Yuri Baramulla district was foiled after an exchange of fire between Indian troops and terrorists. The incident, which occurred amid the ongoing Operation Akal Counterterror mission, in South Kashmir's forests since August 1st, resulted in the loss of precious life of Braveheart Sepoy, Banathanil Kumar. The China Corps paid tribute to his bravery and extended condolences to his family. This comes a day after another soldier was martyred during operational duty in Baramulla. As part of Operation Akal, two soldiers have lost their lives, while security forces have eliminated five terrorists underscoring continued tensions and infiltration attempts along the line of control. <laughs> India's Astra Mk-2 Beyond Visual Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, developed by DRDO, is entering a crucial operational phase. User evaluation trials on the Su-30 Mki are expected to begin soon where IF pilots will test its seeker, propulsion, datalink, and fuse performance against target drones. With an engagement range exceeding 160 kilometers, the missile offers a significant upgrade over the in-service Astra Mk-1 and reduces dependence on foreign systems. In the fourth quarter of 2025, integration on the HAL Tejas Mk-1A is scheduled to commence, involving flight envelope mapping, structural interface checks, software integration, and live firing trials. The Su-30 MKI is likely to be the first platform to induct Astra MK-2 after successful trials, while Tejas MK-1A will gain enhanced long-range interception capabilities once integration is complete. This step forms part of India's strategy to establish a fully indigenous air combat ecosystem for future air dominance missions. India has achieved a major milestone in its Ballistic Missile Defense Phase II program, with the successful design, development, and fabrication of the Very Long Range Radar, or the Very Long Range Tracking Radar, VLRTR. Developed entirely by DRDO's LRD, with industry partners, this gallium nitride-based ASA radar operates in the L-band and is designed to detect and track ballistic missiles at extreme ranges. Unlike the earlier Israel-assisted LRTR, the VLRR or VLRTR is fully indigenous, marking a leap in strategic self-reliance. Capable of tracking multiple targets during all phases of missile flight, it will support BMD interceptors like AD-1 and AD-2 against threats up to 5,000 kilometers, including hypersonic missiles. Industry collaboration played a key role in producing advanced gallium nitride modules domestically. Testing is scheduled for 2026, with deployment plans soon after, enhancing India's layered defense alongside swordfish radars, 
and S-400 systems to counter threats from China and Pakistan. India recently showcased its first fully indigenous anti-drone solution. The highlight was the 10 to 12 kilowatts multi-channel laser directed energy weapon developed by DRDO's Center for High Energy Systems and Sciences, capable of instantly neutralizing range of aerial threats, including nano, micro, and mini drones, by delivering precise, high-energy laser beams that cause structural damage or disable critical sensors at low operational cost. Alongside DW, the D4 Counter Unmanned Aerial System, a comprehensive anti-drone system integrating multiple technologies for detection, deterrence, and destruction, was also showcased. Developed by DRDO's Electronics and Radar Development Establishment, can be deployed in static tripod-mounted or mobile vehicle-mounted configurations. Complemented by radar, RF sensors, electro-optic and infrared cameras, jammers, and GPS spoofing, the system offers both soft-kill and hard-kill options. Trials used multi-copter targets simulating real threats, proving operational readiness. This builds on earlier 2 kW and 30 kW laser weapon successes, with a 300 kW Surya system under development for high-speed missile defense. Designed for deployment on land, sea, or potentially airborne platforms, the D4 addresses rising UAV threats in modern warfare. That's all from YKS team for now, hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.